Welcome back everybody, welcome to myself as well. You might be asking Sleepy, this is a long long video. Not when I think about it, I think a visual novel video gameplay, let's play. It should be longer, not gonna lie. Before I did shorter videos because you know, um, I don't know, I don't know, I guess less strainness on, the, uh, on, my, on my voice. Who knows but yeah welcome back to me welcome back to you i had i have uh, a lot of bad news in my life right now but yeah you know, right now i got some leeway to finally record so yeah welcome back why no more future i just want to finish this game not gonna lie i'm curious what's the ending i could literally just search it right now but no we are going on an adventure all right not as in becoming an actual nurse or doctor mind you school was always a nightmare and i can't imagine college being any better i mean more like a hobby than anything else this is definitely uncommon you reckon you can't see you've ever heard of an altruistic person like this not wanting to go into med school or treating their passion as a hobby on the other hand, you definitely relate to his feelings on modern education. You don't remember your time in school particularly fondly even after losing the ability to attend following your situation. In this regard, this young man reminds you a lot of your younger cousin too. I see, so you basically want to become your sister's private physician? Yeah, that's it. That'd be a lot of fun. Honestly, she can be quite a handful to deal with sometimes. I can't remember all the times she came back home hurting like hell and I... Sounds like the worst waitress position you've ever heard of. Does her coffee shop run a fighting arena on the side too? As confused as you are, you try to console the panicking young lamb. I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, it's fine. Don't worry. She's a lot tougher than she seems at first glance, and she's the hardest worker you'll ever meet. I just can't help but worry a little sometimes, being her brother and all. Must be nice to have some, someone always around caring for you like that. You're ashamed to admit that it kind of makes you a little jealous. Right, as you're about to ask even more questions, the elevator finally ceases to move after what felt like an eternity. Oh, that's my floor! Took long enough. The door is open and the two of you step outside, glad to be finally free. Once outside, you turn to face your new acquaintance once again. Well, that's my cue to take the stairs, I guess. It was very nice talking with you though. I definitely look forward to hanging out with you again in the future. The lamb shares with you a warm and happy smile, maybe a little expectant too. Oh come on, you asked so many questions about me and my sister, the least I can do is to introduce you to. Well that came out of nowhere. Okay, um, are you sure about that? Yeah, I'm sure, she wouldn't mind. We never have anyone over for dinner, or for anything really. I'm sure she'd enjoy your company, I know I do. Almost as if suddenly realizing how sudden this invitation is, Apollo begins to nervously scratch the back of his neck, turning his meek gaze to the ground. I mean, I don't want to pressure you or anything. The last thing I want after everything you did for me tonight is to... Sure, I don't see why that would be a problem. After all, it's not like you had any grand plans for tonight. Plus, someone needs to tell this Daphne what sort of troubles her brother went through before he forgets. R really? Y you I mean, that's awesome. Uh, I mean, that's awesome. Here, give me a second. The lamb approaches one of the doors closest to the elevator, which likely leads to the apartment where the two siblings live together. He lightly knocks on the door a couple of times with dubious effi efficacy. Efficiency? No, there's no idea. Efficacy. Eff efficiency. Blah, 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 blah. Daphne, I'm home. Nothing. Not even a hint of a sound comes from beyond the wooden entrance. Could it be that the place is empty? The late hours suggest otherwise, but knowing that she does catering, that she's apparently a very tough worker. Well, you wouldn't put it past your employer to force her to work over, over time is all. Seeing as the lamb isn't really doing anything but idling around without a care in the world, you decide to press the doorbell right next to the entrance in case that could help. However, as you're about to do just that... Apollo, is that... What the... What is that? Wait, what? She's a robot? Before you can even process what you're witnessing, the girl rushes forward and embraces her brother as hard as she can. I was so worried. Why did you leave? You know it's dangerous out there at this hour. I... 
no it's okay we can talk about it later if you want for now how about we just before she can finish her sentence the girl the human finally notices you and her expression does a complete 180 wait a minute hold on for a second are you telling me humans and humans are they exist interesting who what is this god damn it are you effing kidding me now apollo seems completely oblivious to your mutual discomfort as he tries to introduce you to each other oh him don't worry daphne his name is isaac and he's the human puts herself in between you two like a lioness would before her cubs she may be small by your newfound standards but her gaze is as fierce as can be She's definitely scared than those thieves or murderer, that's for sure. Apollo, I think I left a pot full of water in the stove. Can you go look at it for me for a while? Y yup, you can already smell the trouble brewing from here, literally. Are, are you sure, Daphne? Isaac, please. The lamb turns to look at you for a moment with uncertain eyes. He tries to reason with the human for a while, but ultimately can do nothing but heed her advice and step inside the house. Before he leaves, the young man sends you one last smile and a few words of encouragement. Encouragement. Don't worry, you got this. Without another word, Apollo closes the door behind him and leaves you and his sister to your devices. And then there were two. Can't say you're liking where your curiosity landed you. You're not sure what you're supposed to be more stunned by. Her appearance or her temper? Maybe a bit of both. The young girl gives you an ice cold stare, inspecting you from top to bottom without saying a word. It feels so surreal actually standing face to face with one of them, a human. There's supposed to be a genetic and statistic anomaly, a one in a million occurrence, oftentimes even rarer than that. In a way, it's sort of like looking in a twisted mirror. She's a living reminder of what humanity used to look like before the shift over a hundred years ago. You've never seen one of them in the flesh, and you were almost certain you'd never seen one you'd never see one in the future either. All the humans you remember were either pictures in an ebook or paintings in a metaverse, which is fitting considering that she looks like a piece of modern art herself. Her body, although completely devoid of fur, feathers, or scales, is more or less what you'd expect from someone her age. Her, her age, her choice of attire on the other hand, is questionable to say the least. What is truly unsettling, however, is her face. It looks like a white canvas where a child drew a pair of cold, piercing blood red eyes and a thin line for her mouth. Where in the world her nose disappeared to is another question entirely. I was gonna ask the same thing, though does, she doesn't have a nose. You're not exactly an expert on human anatomy, but even you can assert that something's clearly unique about her. Maybe you're being a tad too judgmental, all things considered. However, it's hard to feel remorseful when she's being just as, if not even more judgmental than you. The hatred in her eyes leaves no doubt as to her feelings towards you, as well as her intentions. What do you want? The girl's been silent for so long, you almost don't notice when she finally speaks up. You're pretty sure that she asked a question just now, though her tone made it seem more like a statement. Look, I... Listen, there's two kinds of people in this world. There's the people who don't have a problem with us, and then there's the people who do. Depending on which group you fit into, you're either going to leave on your own, or I'm gonna have to force you to. The more this girl speaks, the more you can feel your rage building up inside you. Whatever problem you think I have with you two, I don't. You got the wrong guy here. Yeah, I can tell that much. If you followed us here to start throwing hands, you'd already put it on your way back to the lobby in pieces. Who in the world does this asshole think she is? Well, I guess that means we're done then. So long. Just like that, without so much as looking you in the eye, the human turns around, opens the door, and tries to get inside her apartment. But you aren't gonna let her go that easy. Before even you can realize it, you've already grabbed her by the arm, a furious look in her eyes. What the hell is your problem? For a moment, the girl looks stunned as she realizes what you just did. However, it doesn't take long for her to free herself from your grasp, clenching her fist tightly as she does so. What the hell is my problem? You... It's me, right? I can tell. I'm your problem. Am I not? God knows I've been everybody's problem, lady, for whatever reason. I... 
For the first time since the beginning of this heated streaming contest, the girl looks genuinely speechless. You're a little unsure yourself. Ranting at someone like this doesn't feel like something you'd ordinarily do. But you've been enduring this nonsense all day today and you were bound to explode at some point. This asshole yelling at you for defending her brother was simply the last straw. You know, at least all the others had the decency of hating me in silence. Living quite quietly whenever I show up, staring hatefully at me from afar, keeping all their awful thoughts to themselves. But no, you just have to be upfront about how much you hate me. Huh. All because I'm no longer alive like the rest of you? Because I'm no longer human like the rest of you? What the fuck are you talking about? I don't... Fuck. You. I've had enough of this nonsense. If you're gonna hate me just because of what I've become, at least say that to my face instead of hiding behind all this passive-aggressive bullshit. It's not like you give a damn either way. I definitely didn't save your brother from those thugs earlier because I cared about the shitty opinions of people like you. You feel like you're out of breath, even though breathing is the <laughs> Oh god, I just, I don't know, the breathing thing kind of triggered me, man. Even though breathing is the last of your concerns right now. But that's okay. You said all that needed to be said. You should probably leave this asshole behind and head back to your apartment now, but you'd rather wait and see her reaction first, if only to claim a moral victory over her in the end. So... Go on, I'm listening. Say what you want to say and be done with it. The girl remains quiet for a while, hesitating to speak up. Either you left her authority speechless or she's busy mulling over your words in silence or both. <clears throat> Just as you're about to press her again, she finally asks a question that you weren't quite expecting. Did... Did some of the thugs really try to attack Apollo? You're not kidding, right? The question came so out of left field it takes a while to answer. If you really care, yes, some assholes were attacking him, so I knocked them out and let them bring me here. Happy now? There's no way you did that. It takes everything you have not to break out in laughter. This human is either irredeemably in denial or tremendously stubborn. I'm a 6'6 android covered in steel and titanium alloys from head to toe. You really think I can't handle myself in a fight? I didn't say you couldn't, I'm just saying you didn't. And why wouldn't I do it, huh? Now it's the girl's turn to raise her voice, the strength of her vocal cords being more than enough to stun you. You think everyone who comes up to our place is here to drink tea and play some zombie sniper or something? Look around you, you see any doors opening up? See anybody willing to check up on the mess we're making? You take a brief look around you as the girl invited you to? The hallway is as empty as a modern art museum, just as she claimed it would be. Odd, given the ruckus you've been causing, there's no way anyone in the building or at least this floor could be oblivious to you too. See, nobody's gonna check up on us. We could start kidding each other right here now and no one would bat an eye. After all, they can tell it's me who's getting railed by some weird looking robot thing. You think they give a shit about that? You act like what you claim you did was normal, but it wasn't. So stop acting so high and mighty because you don't know jack shit about us. After the human's done with her rant, a long silence follows. You don't think either you or the girl has anything left to shout. You were quite thorough with your arguments. All you can do is look each other in the eyes or your visor in her case and certain where to go from there or here. You're still quite mad with her. She did say some pretty awful things after all. And yet, you feel like you understand her a little better now, somehow. You're saying you really helped me, my brother out. Sorry. Her voice feels so much clearer now, almost like it was back when she welcomed Apollo back home. It still has a little bit of an edge to it, but it's not sharp enough to cut you anymore. Would you like to go ask him yourself? Assuming he hasn't already forgotten about it, that is. How do you- Oh, of course you know about that. Do you mind? Might as well, go right on ahead. Alright, give me a minute. Without further ado, the now quiet lady steps inside, leaving you hanging outside of the door. Looks like she can entertain reasonable conversations after all, at least whenever she feels like it. Despite her request to wait for a minute, it doesn't even take half of one for her to return. She doesn't look any different than how she did before, but her gaze is now facing the ground instead of your visor. I really fucked up, didn't I? Her tone sounds apologetic, or at least it tries to be. There's no more animosity in her voice, just a lot of awkwardness. 
You can say that again, I gotta say. I definitely didn't expect all that from the way Apollo described you. Yeah. Although, hmm? I know it sounds weird, but I think I kinda get it. I'm still not totally over your outburst just now, but I get it now. You've met a lot of awful people, haven't you? People who had no qualms with hurting both you and your brother. Made you feel like outcasts and exiles. I can tell. I've been in the same boat for the last two weeks. No, well, before that even. I know how it feels to be in your position, and I can imagine what you must have felt when you saw me show up at your doorstep and announce like that. I see. The girl keeps staring at the floor for a while, unsure of how to respond. Well, fat lot, fat lot of good that does me. Knowing you understand doesn't change the fact that I tried to scare you off the only person. You're a person, right? Last I checked. Heh, <laughs> right. The only person that actually helped us out when we needed it, when he needed it. I'm so fucking useless. Useless isn't the word you'd use, an idiot would probably be a far more apt description. But at the very least, she seems willing to own up to her mistakes. You can respect that much at least. Hell yeah, OG man. Seeing as she doesn't seem to know what to say next, you decide to help her out a little. Show her a little kindness since you're feeling generous tonight. Rough as you may have been, at least you can claim you were acting in your brother's best interest. Better than most other people have met tonight at least. Plus, it's not like I was any nicer to you than you were to me. The girl laughs off your comment as she shakes her head. Please, you think any of that hurt me? If I couldn't handle a few mean words, I'd never be able to live that down. If anything, I'm glad you didn't break some of your city steel alloys or whatever trying to punch down a little old me. This girl sure is full of herself, far more than you'd normally be able to tolerate. Although, something tells you that this isn't mere bravado speaking, her cockiness is backed up by unwavering courage and determination even in the face of someone as scary as you. She's definitely got more character than most people out there. You give her that. But I guess I owe you an apology as well as some thanks for helping Apollo out when I couldn't. I know you probably just want to leave and be done with us for good but... Apollo did say he wanted to invite you over for dinner. We're not a three-star restaurant by any means, but it's the least I can offer to repay you for all the trouble you went through on his behalf. You could just tell her to fuck off and head straight to your apartment. Your reason? It wouldn't be uncalled for, especially after everything you've had to endure tonight. But then, what are you gonna do afterwards? It's not like there's anything left for you there, just an empty, lonely house. Sorry for the sniffles. You have no friends to call, no games you feel like playing. You could head to bed early, but that's just as sad an alternative as to go doing nothing. It's true that both Apollo and his sister have given you plenty of reasons to want nothing to do with them, but at the same time, they also gave you plenty of reasons to be interested in them. Apollo's been nothing but sweet the whole night, while his sister, though extremely overprotective, seems like someone you'd love to chat and have a beer with. Judging from her expression, she probably expects you to leave like she's already resigned herself to the fact that you'll we'll never want to see either of them again. And you don't feel like proving her right. Hope you guys have better games laying around than Zombie Sniper. Daphne's expression clearly shows how unexpected that answer is to her. However, after a few seconds of incredulity, she seemed- Oh, that's the first time I've heard that word. Or read that word, to be exact. She simply snorts as she motions you to follow her inside. Of course we do. What kind of loser do you take me for? Now get in already. I got plenty of fighting games and I can't wait to kick your ass in all of them. Fighting games? Reminds you of your late high school years when you spent your afternoons playing at your friend's house while his family was away. Everything felt so much simpler back then. Well, at least winning against raging children online was... Maybe mo mo mopping the floor with this girl is, is exactly what you need to end your night on a positive note. With these comforting thoughts in mind, you step past the threshold to the two siblings' abode. The pair's apartment is warm, cozy, and surprisingly homely. Almost feels like an autumn, autumnal grove with so many delicate beiges and browns coloring the place. I like the color. Yeah, it's pretty homey. A long orange carpet lies on the floor where an old-looking memorabilia spy on you from a half-hidden a, a half corner. 
A small brown sofa lies in the middle of the room before a short-legged table looking directly at an old-fashioned wooden drawer with a large screen on top. You can see lots of gaming equipment within the drawer and above the table, including a high-tech VR headset, the likes of which you could only dream of back when you still live and breathe. Looks like finding ways to pass the time won't be an issue around these parts. In the back lies the kitchen, where you can see Apollo hard at work, fitting with pots, pans, and fiery stoves. Hey, you sure took some time. Everything alright? Spoken like someone who didn't run off as soon as things started heating up. Or maybe like someone who already forgot he did that in the first place. Yeah, we're cool. Upon noticing that you are there, the lamb's eyes widen in surprise. Isaac, you're here. I'm so glad. I didn't expect you to actually come visit tonight. Does this mean you and my sister are friends now? Uh... Not quite, no. Though you imagine it's not a very nice thing to say out loud. Before you can explain yourself to the young man, his sister... Oh god, my vision is getting... His sister steps forward to reply in your stead. Something like that, but really all I did was invite him for dinner. That's what you wanted, right? Of course, I'm so happy to hear that. Last time we had dinner for three was... Instead of answering his own query, the lamb suddenly quiets down as his face turns darker. Whatever he's thinking about, you can't imagine it being very nice. Daphne runs to her brother's side, putting an arm around his back in an attempt to comfort him. Come on, don't look so glum, not in front of our guests. We'll have a nice dinner together, alright? Just like old times. After a while, the lamb calms down, the light returns to his eyes. His sister did a great job comforting him, though from what you still cannot say. I think it must be some a family member died, passed away. Like me, yeah, recently. That's why I was gone for some time. Yeah. Alright, that's the thumbnail right there. Let's get it. The young man then turns to address you once again, a happy look on his carefree face. Right, I did say we always cook more than we need, didn't I? I guess I'll get an opportunity to show you after all. A very happy look on his face indeed, almost unnaturally so. He acts like he didn't just narrowly avoid some sort of existential crisis. Could it be that he already forgot all about it in three seconds flat? He turned to face Daphne, hoping to find out something from her, but the girl looks as calm as can be, if only a little uncertain. She at least seems to be aware of what just happened, which does confirm that this isn't another case of your paranoia acting up. There's something truly st strange about that boy, beyond his sudden bouts of amnesia, of amnesia, although the memory loss is definitely connected to it. Whatever it could be, however, you can't even fathom a guess at what. Anyway, you should probably get back to the stove before something happens to the food. O oh, right. Spurred on by his sister's reminder, the lamb rushes back to the kitchen, leaving you and the human alone in the living room. We're having spaghetti and meatballs tonight, by the way. Is that fine with you, Isaac? We also have leftovers in the fridge if we'd prefer something else. Uh, I'll, I'll take the spaghetti, thank you. Again, it really doesn't matter what food they offer you. You could skip on this meal entirely if you so wish. But it'd be criminal to refuse their offer, especially when the aroma emanating from the stove is so, so good. But your synthetic nose goes ham on the intoxicating allure of the meatballs cooking in the oil. You spot Daphne grabbing some old school controllers from the drawer underneath the screen, beckoning for your assistance. Come on, help me set this thing up. Your ass won't be grass on its own, you know. Uh, are you sure? I wouldn't want Apollo to feel left behind while we play. Upon hearing your concern, the lamb shyly replies from the kitchen. Uh, oh, thanks for the offer, but I think I have to turn it down. Someone has to keep an eye on all these goodies. I don't mind if you guys want to do a couple rounds before dinner. It should only be 10 minutes before everything's ready anyway. Are you sure about that? Yeah, absolutely. Have fun for me too, alright? I'll be cheering you on from over here. And with that, the young man returns to his work at the hot stove, roasting meatballs and tomato sauce and whatnot. You're still a little unconvinced, but it'd be rude to refuse Daphne's offer now that Apollo's given you the all clear in the end. You oh, wait, sorry. In the end, you decide to just honor the two's wishes and give the cocky girl the beating she's looking for. Oh. 
You slowly approach a drawer where the human is still busy trying to turn on the video game his console hooked up to the screen. The Ultimate System 5D, definitely not what you describe as a casual console in the slightest. That abomination has bred the most toxic, entitled, and overall garbage players of the last decade, as well as some of the best in the world overall. Yup, Daphne had to learn how to consistently talk shit somewhere, and she definitely didn't pick it up from Apollo. And looks like Sandra, family dog, is borking. Who is it? Alright, welcome back. Just some random people, I guess. Yep. Yep, Daphne had to. Yep, okay, I read that. You've never owned that console. Lucky you, but you've played on it a couple of times at your old friend's house. It's been almost a year since the last time you did, however. You hope your muscle memory will be enough to carry you, assuming you retain any past your transition. As you're inspecting the console while waiting for the main menu screen to pop up, Daphne whispers in your ear in an almost conspiratorial fashion. Don't listen to him, he just doesn't want to be the next in line on the chopping block is all. My brother's a big softie, even in video games, if there's any fighting involved, he just freezes up like a popsicle. Gosh darn it man, God, what, the fuck, what the fuck is that man? What the fuck, what the fuck, 9 PM, who does this shit? Welcome back, again random people man, at night, what the hell, I hope you'll be able to provide me with a better challenge. I've gone tired, tired of stomping angry losers on, the la on ladder. You never played online on this system, but she definitely sounds like someone who regularly does. She doesn't look like such a player, mind you, but the attitude checks out. Can you can it with the trash dog? Can, can you can it with the trash dog? It's not gonna stop you from getting wrecked, you know. You hope? Huh. Feeling real confident today, aren't we? Alright, I'll let my joystick do the talking. At least until I'm done trashing you. Thank goodness for that, you never could stand people who boasted twice as much as they played. Even if they're probably better than you at the game. While the game boots up, the two of you take a seat on the sofa, your controller is already in your hands. The couch is barely big enough for you both, but you somehow manage to retain some space between you two as you sit down. So ex how experienced are you at Reaper's Scythe? Reaper's what? It's a competitive game from a few days ago, real competitive. Official servers have been down for quite a while, but local multiplayer is always an option. Unless you'd rather we play something more mainstream. This could be tougher than expected, but you're strangely fine with it. Nah, I'm up for the challenge, can't be all that different from Masters of Warriors 4. Masters of- oh boy, you're really gonna get it, huh? Hey, we'll see about that. As the game boots up, the visual presentation catches you off guard. It looks like a retro S2D fighter with stylized character models against highly detailed black and white backgrounds. You wonder whether your old friend Nem would enjoy this kind of game. The two of you played very, very few fighting games together, but you like to think you have something of a culture on the topic thanks to him. You pray that all those years of experience with him will be of any help against this new foul-mouthed opponent. As the first round begins, however, it's clear that you are sorely underprepared for what awaits you. Without any time to learn the control scheme or the moveset of your character, you're at the complete mercy of your opponent who wastes no time mopping the floor with your pixelated remains. Damn. The first round concludes not even a minute after it began, with a resounding 1-0 for the ever cocky human. Need a hand? Awfully nice of her to ask, as well as awfully late. No, I think I can handle this. Let me know how that works out for you. You vigorously shake your head like a fighter in the middle of an arena, trying to focus solely on the game before you and on beating this snarky little pest. However, concentrating proves to be harder than expected as a human begins conversing with you in between matches. So, what's your name again? Right, she still hasn't asked that of you, has she? Name's Isaac. Isaac. Well, mine's Daphne. Good to meet you, I guess. So what's up with the weird robot cosplay? I don't know. What's up with you not having a nose? The human appears to take great offense at your light-hearted light banter. What are you talking about? My nose is right here. She points at the blank spot on her face with her finger and starts turning it around as if to highlight the feature that isn't there. You can't tell whether she's being serious or not right now. Right, well to answer your question, this is no cosplay. I'm the real deal, honey. I am the robot, the beast. The real deal? I don't even know what that, that deal is. Hold on, you never heard about synthetics before. Do I look like I have? 
Wow, that that's strange, man. That's strange. It really puts that heated exchange in a hallway in an entirely different perspective. If she really doesn't know about synthetics, she can't hate them either. Which means the only reason reason she was hostile to you at the start was because she thought you could be a threat to Apollo. That's quite understandable, actually. So, gonna explain yourself anytime soon or do you want your ass kicked again before you do? You only now realize you managed to lose another round while you were thinking all that. Maybe focusing on the three things at once is still a little too much for you. Are you and as you begin another match, you try to explain yourself to the inquisitive girl. Well, I like, like I said, I'm a synthetic. So you're a robot. An android. Big difference. Look, I can barely tell a freezer and a fridge apart, alright? If there's a difference between those two terms, I can't see it. I see. I guess I should have expected that. I was like that too before I turned this way. Well, care to explain what I'm missing then? That I'm alive for starters. The look on her face is definitely worthy of the half-truth she spoke so convincingly. You serious? As much as you'd like to say yes, you realize that the truth is far more complex than that. Well, that's what we're trying to find out anyway. If I'm really alive, I mean. It's a long story. And with that long story, I'm gonna end this video right here. Hopefully, I see you in the next episode of No More Feature or some other video that I have done. Calm down with Corrupted Kingdoms. I'm waiting for it to keep on updating, you know. Give us a juicy story. Other than that, thank you for watching. Good luck on whatever you're doing. Bye. See you later. Bye.